recollection of it was uh, we walked round the, the barrier of the, of the camp. The, a lot of the prisoners came rushing towards the barbed wire, uh, asking, wanting to know uh, where were we? Where were we? How far away were we? Because they wanted up to date news, you know. So we gave them bits of resources and that. And we went round the barrier and perimeter of the camp and finished up this little isolated bit of the camp, separate huts, um, which turned out to be where the prisoners they took at DF, in that failed raid early on in DF, Canadian prisoners were in there. And it was more of a, a, a prison, as a prison camp, there were small, supposed to be one uh, person cells with one bed in, but the Jerry's had put two beds in, which is just about get two beds in, uh, with uh, just sufficient room for one person to sidle their way down the bit between them. So uh, you basically, when you went in, you just had to th throw yourself on the bed from the bottom. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Glenn and I were such a serving boy. Um, that was where, um, like I say, when we got in there, took a roll call and what have you, uh, got shown into these cells. Um, we weren't, weren't locked in them, but in the daytime. But uh, that was when, as I told you, uh, um, Johnny and I were sitting on our beds, and he was saying, we keep complaining about how hungry he was. And uh, but I reminded him that he had had, I, I used to do, cook the, the breakfast or if I can do, uh, or in the tank, because I always had, we always had eggs and ham and whatnot, which we got off the farm. But I had had bacon and eggs like that morning, and uh, I'd fed him and, and the other two. Uh, and then this was about to have my own, and then that was it. It was time for a board, lads, you know. So I said, you morning, I have, you had some breakfast this morning, I didn't have any. So, <laughs> Uh, and the next meal we had that night was potato soup, which you, you, you see these things in films and think, oh, I'm not really like that. Potato soup is like hot water with potato fillings on the top and a, and a cob of black bread, which was so hard, you, listen, you couldn't dunk it, you couldn't cook, you couldn't do anything with it. And Johnny said, what the hell are we supposed to do with this? I said, well, tell you what, when they shut the door at night, just put them up against the door so they can't open it. <laughs> it was awful. Fortunately, I can't remember what else they gave us to eat. Wouldn't have been very much, but fortunately, we'd only been there two days and we got a very cross bottle, uh, which was amazing, really. Yeah. I think that's because they could see that it was the beginning of the end. Yeah, yeah. Because the were far away, because we were only in there for 12 days, I think, before we were liberated. Yeah. And uh, so they gave you got parcels out. Again, the, the, there wasn't much in it in the way of food stuff to eat. More comforting, there were cigarettes and chocolates and biscuits. For the car. But I do, do recall, we had a, um, a tin of dried milk. And uh, we finished up, in fact. Uh, eat not all of it, but at some of the dry milk. At it, not made milk. We at it because it was it felt more like food stuff than anything else. So we survived on that until the, uh, the, the usual thing happened in there. You were free during the day, and there was a wash house. You get washed in the shades if you could, and uh, the constant roll calls. We had to line up. And we counted. Um, the first night was a bit scary because uh, the following morning we were told uh, the Germans had threatened that there were friends, some Frenchmen in one part of that camp and they'd been blown out through the wire at night and come back. Um, come back, you know, blown out of the wire and gone down to the village or whatever. I don't know what they achieved, I have no idea. But they were warned, uh, if it happened again, then hostages would be taken ashore. So we we were not very happy about this. 
and uh, the officer in charge there, uh, one of our officers said, um, uh, we'd, uh, uh, he said, don't worry, we'll s I'll sort it out. Uh, there's no question. So he saw the German commandant and told him there's no question. Our lads are not going to break out. We know what to break out to. Uh, and we don't expect to be here very long. Uh, so if the French do it, well, you teach the French, don't you? To anyway, never again. Uh, and that was it. The next thing I remember, uh, having stopped there for that long, was uh, it must have been early hours of the morning. And this woman's Scots voice, uh, "Come on, laddie, you're old. You're okay. You can go now. Come on." It was Scots guards. Our response was, oh, shut up, will you? I don't want to sleep. <laughs> yeah, the Scots guys to believe us. So anyway, we just stuck there for um, uh, ten, about 12 days, I think, when we were liberated. But then we were there. Uh, we, 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 there was a bad incident when the Jerry's refused. They were, uh, they were asked to let the prisoners go or to evacuate, take the, the guards, the Germans, out of, out of the place and refused to do so. So the next thing was, of course, the place got shelled. Uh, and it hit a part, not in our, our hit our part, it hit uh, part of the um, camp where the Yanks were, and, and there were several Yanks were killed, which is, which is, which is a bit sad, really, you know. Uh, it's a friendly fire, as you might say. Yeah. But uh, Jerry's uh, anyway, they'd gone. But the night we were disturbed by the Scots guards, uh, all the Germans had gone, most of the night anyway. I did hear talks about in the main camp. Uh, there were, it started out as a um, merchant navy. Yeah. Because there were men in ships in German ports. The day war broke out, they were immediately in prison. And they'd been there it's all the war. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, I, I did hear tales about uh, one or two of the German guards who hadn't got out quickly enough who were lynched. Uh, they, they, were just, they just had enough. Uh, but uh, well, as far as I was concerned, as we were concerned, when we came out that morning, James had gone. But it was uh, quite a few days, so five, six days perhaps before they finally got us out of, or off altogether. The Yanks, of course, being so highly organised, within 24 hours every Yank was gone. Um, but we were stuck there waiting for, and uh, to be fl and we were flown back to, we were flown back to uh, Brussels. They landed at Brussels, stopped over there, and we were supposed to uh, uh, just embark onto another plane to go to England and John Lee Glenn. The right kinds of lads were with us, especially this little fella. From with us? Yeah. He said, uh, go on, let's go into, go into Brussels, go into town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, well, there'll, be, there'll, be, there'll be plenty of planes going about with you. Right? You don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. well, he said, I suppose you were. So we wandered into Brussels. I don't know what we expected to achieve. Cause we haven't got a beam between us. <laughs> <laughs> we just wandered around. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, we might have got a trick somewhere because the... They were very grateful for the British troops now, you know. Yeah. But we just went around by a couple of hours, you know. <laughs> then wandered back to the airport and just joined a line of troops, climbing into an aircraft, into a Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's when it's right, what happened. Uh, yeah, that.